31, let's take a look at using algebraic operations on functions through a couple of different lenses. I want to look at this problem graphically, and then I'd like to look at it numerically. So this is, again, the graphical approach. We're going to get all of our information from a graph. This is ultimately going to be our numerical approach. We're going to get all of our information from a table. And that's in contrast to example one, which was the analytical approach where we actually had functions and their formulas to plug into. So let's take a look. I need to use, if possible, use the given representation of functions f and g to evaluate these, these expressions, right? So I need a sum, a difference, a product, and a quotient. So let's see how, how much we can get done on this, because I have this if possible, which gives me just a little bit of a, like, mm, something's about to happen. So I'm going to scooch this up so I can get as much of my um, graph with as much space to work in as possible. So let's, let's do the graphical approach first. So let's first start with f plus g evaluated at 1. And from the previous page, we know that is f of 1 plus g of 1. All right, now I don't have a function to plug into, right? And that is distinctly different from example 1. But I can go get all of these y values from my graph. Now, it looks like this upside down parabola is f of x, and this absolute value function is g of x. So let's find f of 1. 1 is my x-coordinate, so I'm going to go right by one unit. And because I want the f function, I need to hop onto the parabola. So let me hop onto the parabola. It's over here. I see f of 1 is 3. So this is going to turn into 3 plus, plus whatever g of 1 is equal to. So let's find g of 1. I'm still at an x-coordinate of 1, but now I'm on the absolute value function, and that looks to be the ordered pair. I'm going to just really small and write it in there. Um, that looks to be the ordered pair 1, 1. I need the y value, which is 1. So f plus g evaluated at 1 is ultimately 4. Okay? All right, now I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to say that we want f minus g at 0, and then I'm going to scooch this up just so I have that graph and as much space as possible to work with. So the next thing I want is f minus g at 0, and the difference function would be f of 0 minus g of 0. So let's, let's see what we're working with. Now my x-coordinate is 0. All right, so I see when x is 0, I have two ordered pairs here. I have 0, 0, and 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 4. Okay, so going through this, the first one I want is f of 0. So I'm at 0, but I need to hop onto the f function, which is the parabola. Well, the y value there, or the output value, is 4. Now I need g of 0. I'm on my x-coordinate of 0, and I need to be on the absolute value function. And at 0, the y value is 0, so this is 4 minus 0, which is 4. Okay? The next quantity that I was asked to find was f times g evaluated at negative 1. All right, now I'm going to start to run out of space. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this out because I just don't have enough room to write it, but I thought ahead and I printed out a second one so that we can figure out how to do this. So if I want f times g at negative 1, that will be f of negative 1 times g of negative 1. So let's see what we have here. My x values are negative 1. So when I go to negative 1, I can see the ordered pair here and here. So this looks to be what negative 1, 1. And this one looks to be negative 1, 3 as I'm working through that. Now the first thing I need is f of negative 1. Well, f of negative 1 is going to be on the parabola. And it looks like that f value is 3. And now I'm multiplying this time out. All right, now I need g of negative 1, and g is the absolute value function, and that y value there is 1. So this becomes 3 times 1, which is just 3. And the last quantity I was asked to find was f divided by g evaluated at negative 2. And from the previous page, we know this is f of negative 2 in ratio to g of negative 2, if it's possible. We'll have to look at a potential domain issue. 
But this time out, x is equal to negative 2. So I'm over here. I've got that ordered pair and that ordered pair. So let's see, this is the ordered pair negative 2, 0, and this is the ordered pair negative 2, whoops, negative 2, 2. Okay, so let's see what we have. f of negative 2, I need to hop on the parabola, and at negative 2, it looks like, at the parabola, it looks like my y value is 0. And then g of negative 2, I need to hop on the absolute value function, and it looks like my y value there is 2. Okay, great. So let me move this out of the way. So we have 0 divided by 2. And sometimes we can struggle with, well, is that the undefined version? Or is that 0? What is that, that fraction equal to? So I want to reiterate, we always have to worry about denominators excuse me, fractions where the denominator is zero. And if you'll look right here, my denominator is not zero. But if you struggle with remembering what zero divided by two is, you can always just put it into your calculator and your calculator will say, hey, no problem, it's zero. So this answer is zero, all right? Or another way of thinking about this is, anytime you have a fraction and the numerator is zero, the fraction zero. In fact, the only way for a number to be zero is when the new, uh, excuse me, the only way for a fraction to be zero is when the numerator is zero. All right, so that was the graphical approach. Right? I'm gonna scooch this back up. Okay, so we just did everything by graph here, right? So we have the graphical approach where we get all of the y values from our graph, but now I wanna look at the numerical approach. I'm gonna get all of my y values from this table, right? I've got no functions to plug into. I've got no graphs. I've just got tables of numbers. So let's try and calculate all four of these quantities. And again, the first one they tasked me with was f plus g of one. So that's f of one plus g of one. Okay, my x coordinate is one. And if you look in this first column, it talks about x coordinates. So I'm down here on this row, my x coordinate is one. Well, when my x coordinate is one, f of x is equal to one. And when my x coordinate is one, g of x is equal to six. So this ultimately becomes one plus six, which is seven, okay? Now, the next quantity I'm asked to find is f minus g evaluated at zero, which should be f of zero minus g of zero. All right, so let's see what we're working with numerically here. Now again, here, my x-coordinate is zero. When my x-coordinate is zero, it says my function value for f is negative one, and my function value for g is four, so ultimately this is going to be negative five, okay? All right, I'm gonna scooch this up, so we're gonna lose sight of some of this. I'll move this up till that is just out of sight, but not to worry. I printed out an extra version of this table so I can reference it. Let me get this, there we go. All right, so the next quantity they asked us to find was f times g evaluated at negative one, which is f of negative one times g of negative one. And let's see what we have here, okay? So now my x coordinate is negative one. It says when x is negative one, f of x is negative three, and g of x is two. So this should be negative three times two, which is negative six. Okay, and the last one, the one that can be the fishy one, is we want the quotient function of f over, f over g evaluated at negative two. So this should be f of negative two in ratio to g of negative two. Let me put a little squiggly there just to separate it. All right, so my x coordinate this time out is negative two. It looks like the function value for f is negative five and the function value for g is zero. And I hope maybe your spidey senses are going off. There's a problem here, right? We are not allowed to divide by zero. This is one of our three main domain issues, all right? We can't have a fraction where the denominator is zero. So this is actually undefined. So if I was asking for an answer on a test, you would actually say f in ratio to g at negative two, you would tell me it does not exist. That's what D and E stands for, does not exist. 
and your calculator would back you up on this. If you tried to do negative five divided by zero, right, it would actually say, hey, no, there's some kind of error. You're not allowed to divide by zero. So even your calculator will warn you that you're looking at a domain issue, okay? All right, so with all of that, let me scooch this back down just so we remember where, where we started and where, yeah, where we started and where we've come from or where we've been. So we've done algebraic operations on functions, the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient. We, in example one, did them analytically. And then in example two, we looked at them graphically and numerically. So with that, we're gonna head on to example three and take a look at composing functions. I'll see you in a few, bye.